Hello everyone, this is Debbie Henderson from Debbie's Designs. Happy Sunday. I'm going to wait a few more seconds for everybody to come on. Now I'm hoping everybody um, fall, uh, did fall back on your clocks last night or early this morning with the time change. Okay, I can see some of you guys coming on. Hi, Connie. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Fran. Okay, we're going to get started. So tonight is my Sunday share, and I'm actually going to be sharing some projects using the Buffalo Check background stamp. Now, this is a large stamp, and when I purchase these large background stamps, I actually prefer the wood mount only because I actually have these stacked on a shelf so I can see them and I use them. If not, if you buy the clear mount, you have to have this humongous clear block to be able to use it because it is a large stamp. So as for myself, I always prefer the wood mount when it comes to these larger stamps. Now, just a few reminders before I get started. November, my hostess code. If you use that, uh, make sure you put that in when you check out. There's a box for the hostess code that you put in there before you finalize your order. And for this month, the month of November, my drawing, my door prize is the Cambridge Carol stamp set. I'll be drawing that once the month is November has been, uh, has gone by. Any order size, you qualify for your name to be in my drawing. Now, as far as the Buffalo Check stamp, I did have uh, one of my customers actually contacted me when I posted my class a couple days ago. She had not noticed this in the catalog because it's so small. And she actually thought this was designer paper. So this is the actual stamp. And as I stated, it does come in wood mount and clear mount. The wood mount is item number 147797. And the clear mount is 147794. And you can find that on page 38 of the holiday catalog. Now, one more announcement. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had put up a poll asking you guys what I should do for my annual 12 days of Christmas. I'm not going to give it away tonight, but I am going to be using this art canvas. It's 11 inches by 14 inches. I'm going to start using this on Wednesday, um, November 7th, so two, uh, three nights from now. And I'm going to be doing 12 days in a row and I'm going to be doing something special with this. So I'll let you try to guess what I'm making. Um, and I'm gonna do 12 days in a row at 7 p.m. Eastern time each night. Okay, now let's get on to the first project of the night. I am doing three cards tonight. The first one, I'm using the Christmas Pine stamp set. This was a stamp set that debuted last year in the holiday catalog, and it carried over. I'm also using the dies, the coordinating dies. So let me show you what I've cut up ahead of time. I've gone ahead and cut up the little um, spruce needles. This is Call Me Clover. I did all three sizes. I did a gold foil bow, and this is the smallest of the two bows. And then I did Whisper White for the two bows. And before I show you the card, I'm using Call Me Clover, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Soft suede, five and a quarter by four. Whisper white, five inches by three and three quarter. A piece of white for stamping. And then soft suede, and this measures five inches by one and a half inches. And let me see what else. We've got a couple of inks, early espresso, crumb cake, Soft Suede, and Call Me Clover. And this is the card I'm making for the first one. 
Now on this one, I'm going to be inking on white cardstock and I'm gonna do a couple more different things as we go along. So this is my first one. Let me go ahead and fold the card base. So how are you guys doing with the time change? As for Dave and I, um, we actually lost power last night because it was so windy. So I only got like three hours sleep. So I'm very tired, but that's okay. I'll catch up by tomorrow. Okay, I glued the soft suede layer on the Call Me Clover layer. Now I'm going to bring in the stamp. And I just want to move this over so I don't get it dirty. I'm going to... Oh, Lori, you don't change your time. Oh, you're so lucky. We Every year we complain about it, and I wish we didn't have to change ours. Now, when you have a stamp this large, it's a lot easier to ink it up facing upwards. So I'm just going to pounce. And I am going to have to clean this after each project. I'm going to bring in the Whisper White. And what I'm going to try to do, you have squares around all four edges. I'm going to try to center the, the cardstock piece. And then what I usually do is bring in a scrap piece of paper, lay on top. And then I just press. It would be just like uh, running a brayer over the top. And this way it also lets the ink uh, suck into the cardstock. And it protects your fingers from getting inky. So now I'm going to remove. And look how pretty that came out. Now let me put this aside. I'm going to have to wash it in a minute. My next step, I'm going to add stamping dimensionals to the back. So I'm seeing that a lot of you guys don't have a time change. That's so not fair. Like here in Maine, it was dark at 4 p.m. I hate it. And then you wake up in the morning and it's still dark. Okay, now this is going to be glued to the front over the soft suede layer. Next, I'm going to do the cardstock strip with Early Espresso. Now, let me bring all my stamps in. I love the sentiment on this one. May the simple joys of this season be yours. And I'm going to do that more towards the right hand side. So you can see how the early espresso is so pretty on the soft suede, it really pops. And a reminder, don't forget to share my video if you want your name into the drawing for all three cards tonight. Okay, and that's gonna go, I went about almost two squares up on the, on the strip. Now I'm going to bring in all my little pieces. I am going to do a little bit of die cutting tonight, but not too much. We're going to do the pine cones on this one. Now I'm going to flip these upside down and glue them in place. And I'm just adding glue to the center. And I'm not even going all the way across. You don't need to. Just make sure you're not covering the sentiment when you glue these in place. And then the little white pieces. I liked these, I love the shape of them. Again, I'm just putting some glue in the center because they're going to be covered anyway. And we'll put this one up here. And this one going downwards. And now let's do a few pine cones. So I've got soft suede, early espresso, and crumb cake. 
And for the pine cones, I have one of each size, a larger and a smaller. I've got them both on each side. So I'm going to do one of each. And my next one, now these look similar, but this one is actually all of the little diamond shape where this one is half diamond shapes. So we're going to use this one next. Let me get rid of an ink pad. So soft suede is my next color. And I'm going to line that up right over the first one. Now I'll flip it over and do the smaller one. And lastly is the early espresso. So isn't that neat how you have the three variations of color? Okay, now I'm going to bring in the big shot so I can cut out the pine cones. I have to find my dies first. I didn't dig them out. And I don't even know what I did with my stamp set. Here it is. And if you don't want to stamp the pine cones like I did, you can do the ones like this that are the detailed cut ones also. I'm going to see if I can do this without using washi tape. I think I'm good. Okay, so there's my two pine cones. And Believe it or not, I did not use any stamping dimensionals on this card. I just figured with the height of these little sprigs plus the boughs, I really didn't need to because they kind of elevate on their own. So I'm just going to glue these. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. I don't like this little white edge. So I'm going to bring in a crumb cake Stampin' Right marker. And I'm going to get rid of that white edge. Same with this one. See how I made that disappear? Just a little tip. I know you guys like hearing my little tips. Now I'm going to press the gold bow in place. And my last step for card number one is the Artisan, uh, Share What You Love Artisan Pearls. I'm using the green colored ones. Oh, I see lots of hearts. You guys like that tip, didn't you? Sometimes just the simple things just make a card look prettier. Okay, so there's card number one already. Let me set up for card number two. Okay, for this one, I'm using the pocket full of sunshine. And I'm actually using the pocket framelits dies that coordinate. I've gone ahead and cut out one of the pockets using Pacific Point cardstock. I'm using the galvanized buttons. And if you'll notice, I only have one left. I have some on order. I've used a lot of these. I'm also using the little uh, sunglasses and the little pocket tab. Memento black ink. And for my card stock, I'm using Pacific Point eight, uh, five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Another layer of Pacific Point, five and a half, nope, 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 five, by three and three quarter, a scrap piece of 
Smoky Slate. And I'm going to need a scrap piece of white. And then let me just bring the stamps in. We got the sunglasses, the little tab. And then this says, You Dazzle Me. We need the Everyday Label Punch. And this time for the Buffalo Check, we're actually going to stamp on colored cardstock. And I've created the little coordinating pocket. So let me go ahead and clean my stamp. Now, normally when I'm stamping on my own without being live, I would actually have taken this and run it down on the faucet, through the faucet, through the water, and wiped it clean. But because I'm not close to a sink right now, I won't be doing that. Okay, let me go ahead and fold my cardstock piece. Oh, did you notice the little stitch lines too? I'm gonna show you how I did that. So again, we're going to ink the stamp upside down. This time I'm using the Memento Black. So this is gonna be yucky to clean after because it's black. And again, I'm going to center my Pacific Point, bring in the scrap. Just keep pressing and let it sit there for a little bit just to let it suck up the ink. So see how pretty that is on colored cardstock. Now we're going to do the pocket. Oh, I just got some on my fingers. Now, how I figured this out, I want the pocket to match up where my checks are. So on this one, I'm going to line it up right below the darker line. So I'm actually gonna turn this upside down and let's see, we also need to center it. So it's going to be partially on one of the black. So I'm just gonna put it right there Press down. Oh, this one's getting messy. There's my little pocket. And let me clean this off first with the paper, just so I won't have so much black all over me. And this will be ready for the next card. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside for card number three. So now I'm going to fold the little pocket. If you don't have this die, I still got black all over my fingers. I think it's stained. I just don't wanna get it on any of my cardstock. The little pocket, when you cut it out, has the score lines already there for you. So you just fold it right on the score lines. Now, how I did the stitch lines, I used the chalk marker and I just went across and you kind of don't stay too long on the black ink because you don't want it to spread. So I just kind of go across and then pick it up quickly. And what's funny, I'm doing these by hand and if you, you don't think you want to do that, there's actually a stamp right here that you can do your own stitch lines and then on the pocket also. But I just thought I'd show you a way to use the chalk marker to create your own. Okay, one more. Okay, 
And the white really does show up nicely, the chalk part of it. Okay, there's my cardstock layer. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the pocket. And I'm following the score line. And then for the top of the pocket, I actually created two rows of stitching. Let's do, and I went about half an inch down for the second one. There, how quick was that? Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so we've got that. Now let me go ahead and stamp the other parts of our card. This is the sentiment. You dazzle me. And then we have, let me see, the sunglasses. Now, I did, do not like the way my sunglasses, I, even though I just re-inked my pad, it doesn't come out very well. So what I did is I brought in a, ba a basic black stamping right marker. And look how nice I can fix that. You can't even tell that I did that myself. You just follow on the inside of the stamped image. I even tried doing it on the stamp and pierce mat, and this one here just does not want to stamp well for me. Okay, so I've got my glasses all fixed. Now let me go ahead and bring in the big shot. So all I have to cut is the little sunglasses and then the little pocket tab. Now I opted to cut the tab before I stamped it and the little uh, image that I'm stamping on the tab says yay. I just think it's easier to do it that way. There now all we have left to do is to assemble card number two. So let me bring everything back in. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue the little tab to the pocket. Just a little detail. Now I've used this pocket quite a bit and normally I would tell you to use tear and tape on the little tabs on, on, the, on the reverse side. But I'm finding that even with the tear and tape, the tabs are coming up after a while. So what I've been doing that works even better is using the glue dots. They seem to hold up better. I just think because the tabs are so small, they seem to want to cause pressure to, to make them come up. I'm just putting three on the three longer tabs. Whoops, I missed that one. And then we'll put two on the smaller tabs. I don't know why, but the glue dots just seem to hold better for me on this. It depends what you're using, because sometimes I use glue dots on ribbon, and that's why you see me use um, the liquid glue also when I do ribbon. Okay, so that's all ready for gluing. Now let's glue the layer number two. And again, I glued that with Stamping Dimensionals. Now, when I do tone on tone, the two layers, I like to use stamping dimensionals as it creates height and the cardstock just stands out more rather than being flat. 
especially when you're doing white on white it just makes the the second layer of white pop compared to being it flat now i'm going to glue this in place and then my little pocket and I, I am lining up the little squares. So see how the rows are continuous? That's what I was trying to achieve. Now I'm going to cut out the sentiment. And I'm actually tucking that, whoops, inside the pocket. And then the sunglasses. So this would be like for a cool dude card. And lastly, if I can find my button because I just kind of shoved everything aside, there it is. And then I've got the twine from the, um, the um, I can't remember the name of the twine. It's in the holiday catalog anyway. It comes in three colors. I'm going to have to cut this because I won't be able to thread that through again. It's with the festive farmhouse suite. And I'm just making a double knot. Now, a little trick that I use on these buttons, they're kind of, of up and down curvy, kind of, they're not flat. So I do add one glue dot, and then I decide where I want to glue it, and I also add a bunch of the liquid glue, and that'll dry clear, and it'll ensure that the button stays in place. Okay, that's card number two. How's that? I hope you guys like that one. So this would be more of a masculine. And again, on the first card, we did colored ink on white. On the second card, we did the black on the colored cardstock. Now let's move on to card number three. Okay, so we're using Dashing Deer on this one. I'm only using the Happiest Christmas Wishes sentiment. I'm also using the Detail Deer Thin Lits dies. And I'm using this deer and I've cut it out with the Sparkle Glimmer paper. Now, if you guys haven't seen all of the glimmer paper that we carry, we have the rose, the sparkle, the gold, the silver, these four are in the annual catalog. And then we have the Joyous Noel, which is part of the holiday catalog. So look at all of this sparkly yumminess. Isn't that pretty, all of these colors? So tonight I'm using the sparkle. And Poppy Parade and Night of Navy ink. I've got a Knight of Navy cardstock base, 11 by four and a quarter. Oh, and I forget to score that one. So let's score that one at five and a half. And then I've got Whisper White, five inches by three and three quarter. I've got three small pieces for banners, Knight of Navy, three and three quarter by one and a half. Granny Apple, one inch by three and a half. Poppy Parade, three inches by three quarter inches. And this is the card I'm making on this one. Now you'll notice that I've added extra lines in my Buffalo check. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So this one I'm inking with the Poppy Parade. I'm hoping none of the black that was on there for card number two is going to transfer over. And again, I'm going to center the cardstock. 
bring in the scrap. And there's the poppy parade. Isn't that pretty? Now I'm going to bring in a ruler and I'm using the Knight of Navy. Let me see if this is the light, I think. I can't even read that. I should have worn my glasses. I think this, no, this is the dark Knight of Navy. And then this is the dark Granny Apple. And all I'm gonna do is use the ruler and use the fine tip end. And I'm going to go a little bit above the halfway mark, straight across. And this is so quick. Whoops, I need to go a little further on that one. So think of all the color combinations you guys could do with this. Okay, one more going horizontally. Now I'm gonna turn and go the other way. So I'm actually going to do this twice because I'm going to use the granny apple also. I should bring my card in so you guys can see it. But see how easy this is and what a dramatic effect it adds to the, the buffalo check. Okay, now let's, whoops. Now we'll bring in the granny apple and again, on the fine tip side. And it's so quick to do. And you can do just one color if you want, um, but I opted to, I thought the granny apple really made the other two colors pop. Okay, just a few more to go. You know what I was thinking, uh, like flirty flamingo with early espresso and maybe a third color, wouldn't that be pretty? Or something with gray, like the coastal cabana, Bermuda Bay and a gray maybe. So you guys will have to try it and let me know what color combinations you found out worked well. Okay, so look how quick I did that. Now, let me bring in the card base. And where is my bone folder? I lost my bone folder, there it is. Oh look, I had laid a little piece of chocolate bar, a little Hershey chocolate bar, because I thought I'd take a break in between the, the three cards and have a little piece of chocolate. Do you guys keep chocolate by your uh, work area? I do. Now, let's glue. the buffalo check layer. And we're only stamping the sentiment on this card. Oh. Okay. This is going on the poppy parade. And then I'm using the tailored tag punch just to add the banner end on each one. I love using this punch for this use. So easy. Okay, now let's glue all of these in place. So you see what I did here? I'm using the same cardstock colors that I used on the ink colors and the blends. So I'm going to add this about an inch from the bottom. And then my little reindeer is going to be glued with stamping dimensionals. And I'm going to bring in my mini ones to add at the top where it's a little skinnier. So 
So this is card number three already. See how quick that was? Okay, so there's card number one with the different colors added to the buffalo check. The green, the Call Me Clover stamped on white. And then the Memento Black stamped on colored cardstock. So those are my three cards for tonight. Make sure you keep sharing my video so I can add your name to the drawing for all three of these cards. And I'll post that sometime tomorrow. And again, a reminder that on Wednesday at 7 p.m. I'm, I'm going to start my 12 days of Christmas. It'll be 12 days in a row at 7 p.m. each night. So thanks so much for stopping by, everyone. And I hope to see you on Wednesday. Have a good night.